Captain Andre's knuckles turned to white as he strained against the ship's helm. His first mate stumbled across the deck as the galleon lurched violently across a rogue wave. What is that mad witch playing at? The first mate yelled, pointing furiously at the half-elf standing at the bow of the ship. Despite his heart racing and adrenaline coursing through his system, Captain Andre could not help but stop and marvel at the Korovar woman's ability to stay standing without bracing herself against the railing. Arcane energy swirled around her as she made somatic gestures, like a violent ballet silhouetted against flashes of lightning, the dragon mark on the back of her hand now glowing, like a lighthouse beacon in the dark of the storm. She knows what she's doing! Strike the royals and enjoy the show! What show, sir? Look! The captain gestured to the three pirate frigates pursuing them at stern. The captain didn't turn, but he did glance at his first mate, who stood wide-eyed facing behind them. As the first mate began to cheer maniacally, he knew, like a hungry kraken, the ocean had just swallowed their pursuers. Sovereigns and firstborn, grant me the four blessings promised to our people. Dominion over the air, dominion over the water, fortune for my family, and fortune for my future. Hello adventurers and welcome to the next installment of Eberron Historian. As voted by you guys, today we'll be talking about the mighty House Lirandar and the Dragon Mark of Storm. Please remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons below if you're enjoying our content, and switch notifications on to stay up to date as we release new lectures in the future. Let's get started. The Dragon Marked heirs of House Lirandar are exclusively Half-Elf, or Korovar in the Elvish language. Heirs of House Lirandar bear the Dragon Mark of Storm, which allows them power over the weather and dominion of the winds and waves. House Lirandar's emblem depicts a kraken, often accompanied by a set of lightning bolts. With the power of the Mark of Storm, House Lirandar have risen to be one of the most wealthy and influential dragon-marked houses, dominating the sea and air trade, as well as providing weather control services to assist agriculture and terraforming. History Time House Lirandar are a much older family than their Korovar counterparts, House Madani, and House Lirandar's rise to power was greatly intertwined with the development of the Korovar's own racial identity. Around 2,600 years ago, a civil war broke out amongst the elvish home continent of Erenal, as the House of Vol was purged by the Undying Court and the Dragons of Arganesson. There will be another video about this in the future. This conflict resulted in a number of Elvish exiles and refugees settling on Corvair. As the Elvish settlers mingled with the humans of Corvair, the first half-elves were born, and many were initially rejected by both races. These half-elves then dispersed around Corvair and grew in number over the next 600 years. Around 2,000 years ago, in the land of Daskara, the settled area that would one day become the nation of Thrain, the Mark of Storm manifested for the first time on two half-elves named Lirin and Selavash. Both half-elves claimed to have been gifted their marks by the sovereigns Arawai and Kol Karan, as well as visions of a glorious future for the half-elf people. Claiming to be the true children of Corvair, the pair embarked on a pilgrimage across the continent, claiming that their mixed blood gave their people strength, and that half-elves were destined to have dominion over both nature and commerce. Liren and Selavesh spent decades traveling and preaching their message to others of their kind, proclaiming their race, the Korovar, the children of Corvair, and encouraging Korovar everywhere to form their own communities and recognize themselves not as a hybrid of two other races, but a unique race in their own right. It is said that Liren and Selavesh regularly used their marks to perform miracles and seem to have an almost supernatural charisma. Their followers eventually came to call Liren and Selavesh the Firstborn and adopted the name Lirindar, meaning Children of Liren. Lirindar communities adopted a doctrine of prescribed marriage among their own race, and soon the Mark of Storm rapidly spread through the line of related families. Those families that carried the Mark soon became the House of Lirindar, and long after Liren and Selavesh passed away, the legend of the Firstborn carried on, and to this day, the Korovar of House Lirindar believe that Liren and Selavesh still guide them onwards. House Lirindar made a name for themselves throughout Corvair, primarily by offering their weather manipulation services to those in need who had the coin. It wasn't until the last war when House Lirindar ascended to true power on the world stage. 
Through the start of the last war, House Lirandar were careful not to breach the neutrality demanded by the Korth Edicts. They provided service to whichever side required aid, using their powers to clear muddy battlefields, clear or blockade supply routes, and accelerate crop growth to bolster food supplies. Until this time, it was House Orion who had dominion over the transport domain, with their overland carriages and lightning rail being the dominant business in the industry. But as the war raged on, House Orion found themselves subject to further occurrences of bad luck. Disrupted trade routes, sometimes at the hands of a Lirandar raincaller, and ambushed caravans were day to day. But the real blow to Orion business came when the White Arch Bridge that connects Karnath to Thrain across the Channel of Sion Sound was destroyed five years into the war in 899YK. With its destruction, House Orion had lost one of their major overland routes connecting East and West Corvair. House Lirandar suddenly found a great demand for their fleets of galleons to maintain trade and supplies in the continent's north end. House Lirandar capitalized on this for 90 years. Their fortune and influence steadily grew, but their next and possibly greatest innovation came to pass in 990YK, when House Kanath and the gnomes of Zalago completed production on the first elemental airships. As the airships were unhindered by trade routes and blockades, and only able to be piloted by bearers of the Mark of Storm almost overnight, House Lurandar replaced House Orion as the lords of the transport industry. For more information on how airships and other vehicles function, check out my other video. Links in the corner above and in the description below. The final blow for House Orion came on the day of mourning. As the nation of Sire was consumed by calamitous mist, House Orion lost thousands of miles of lightning rail track, and with it, their only remaining reliable east-west trade route. House Lirandar were suddenly the undisputed leaders of transport and trade. Following the war, Lirandar was widely praised by the general public, credited with restoring economic prosperity to Corvair using their airships for trade and manipulating the weather to promote booming crop harvests and preventing droughts. The post-war environment has also allowed Lirandar to circumvent certain parts of the Korth Edicts. It is stipulated that no dragon-marked house may own holdings or have standing military throughout Galifar. But now that the Kingdom of Galifar is shattered with a host of new nations declared by the Treaty of Thronehold, House Lirandar have capitalized on the situation. Using their good standing with the Elves of Valinar, who care little for the laws of Galifar, Lirandar now own many holdings throughout the Elven nation, and the house maintains a fleet of armed airships known as Stormships to defend their home island and the nexus of Lirandar operations, known as Stormhome. House Lirandar acquired the rights to establish their main enclave on the barren island at the north edge of Sion Sound in 347YK. Using the power of the Mark of Storms, three years were spent turning the island into a tropical paradise, dubbing it Stormhome, and establishing not just a headquarters for the house, but also a thriving tourist destination. House Galanda established a number of resorts on the island, and even the current Queen Arala of Ander is said to frequent the destination. Despite still being part of the Kingdom of Ander, and even retaining a garrison of Andarian soldiers, Stormhome is widely considered as the property of House Lirandar, which is also debated to be a circumvention of the Korth Edicts. House Lirandar continues to promote the prosperity of the Korovar throughout its ranks. To become a member of the house, you must be a bearer of the Mark of Storm, be a Korovar related to a house member, or marry into the house as a Korovar. Other races may serve Lirandar as employees of the house guilds, but are excluded from holding positions of power, which are reserved for members of the Korovar race only. Unlike other dragon-marked houses, the young scions of Lirandar that bear the Mark of Storm are encouraged to go out on adventures, see the world and expand their horizons. In doing so, the young heirs will grow a network of contacts and influence throughout their travels, which is seen to be a great boon to the house once the heirs return and take their place as productive and mature members of the business. The highest lords of House Lirandar hold the title of Viceroy, and the leader of the house is referred to as Patriarch or Matriarch, often addressed as Firstborn by those who believe that Liran and Selavesh speak through them. The current leader of the house is the matriarch Baron Ezravesh de Lirandar, who commands the house from Stormhome. She is one of the youngest barons in the house's history. 
Our Slurandar has two main specializations. The shipping trade, which is overseen by the Windrights Guild, and weather manipulation carried out by the smaller, but equally important, Raincallers Guild. The Windrights Guild operates the elemental-powered airships and galleons that the house is famous for, and provides the dragon-marked airs to pilot them. Although the airships are the house's main point of dominance in the trade industry, the majority of Windright Guild employees are independent contractors, captains and crewmen who operate non-elemental ships and who are not even necessarily Korovar. These captains must pass regular inspections and pay a commission to the house, and in exchange they are connected with customs and cargo in the house name. Shipping vessels that operate without a house Lurandar seal of approval are said to often find themselves at the mercy of storms and pirates, which encourages prospective traders to seek Windright-operated vessels, further driving the house's monopoly on the shipping trade. The Raincaller's Guild serve as weather manipulators for those who require it and have the coin to pay for such service. Farmers in need of more or less rain for a bountiful harvest, or coastal cities at risk of destructive weather such as hurricanes are the Guild's main clientele. Mark of Storm magic is often used for these purposes, although the Guild has also made great innovations in the field of irrigation systems, dams, reservoirs, and other infrastructure that harness or hinder the forces of nature. Raincaller Guild enclaves can be found in most major city centers, although the Guild also maintains a section of Raincaller agents that regularly visit agricultural hotspots to provide their services. There are several other smaller agencies operating within House Lirandar. Seller's Path provides a religious focal point for the house, as a priesthood that reveres the connection between the sovereigns Arawai and Kol Karan, and the firstborn Liran and Selavesh, the latter from whom the cult takes its name. It is Seller's Path that ensures the legacy of the firstborn is observed, and that the house is always reminded of its divinely mandated destiny. Another smaller agency, known as Liran's Gift, specializes in the craft of artifice, and research into new arcane and technological innovations for the house. Although Liren's gift strives to reduce the house's dependency on House Kanneth's designs, it also works in tandem with Kanneth and the Twelve to further its goals. Rumors abound of another group said to be secretly operating within the ranks of House Lirandar, a cult called the Stormfront, is said to reject the belief that the Mark of Storm is a gift from the Sovereigns and is actually a manifestation of the will of the Devourer, one of the Dark Six. The Stormfront wants House Lirandar to seize its destiny by using the power of their marks to sow destruction and achieve global domination through force instead of economic influence. Rumor has it that Stormfront already secretly controls the house and that Baron Ezravesh is just a figurehead for the public. Darker whispers suggest that the house's monopoly of the shipping trade is enforced by a secret fleet of ships that set forth from hidden coastal enclaves. They are deployed to remove any competition that operates without the Lirandar seal of approval. But surely these are just rumors. If you enjoyed this installment of Eberron Historian, please hit those like and subscribe buttons below and turn notifications on so you're informed when a new episode comes out. If you like free battle maps or the music I use throughout my videos, please swing by my Patreon. For the price of a coffee, you can pick up a monthly pack, including D&D soundtrack I compose myself and a battle map to accompany it. Don't forget you can catch me streaming on Twitch on Thursday nights. We've just started playing through the Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure, Outlaws of Alkenstar. And as always, thank you to the loyal patrons who help keep the channel lights on. Happy rolling, adventurers, and I'll see you next time.